Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can write powerful applications without writing a single line of code. So the tool that I'm going to be using is known as Klein. All it is is a simple extension that you can find for VS Code. Once you download it, it's going to show up like this. Now, if you don't know what VS Code is, I'm going to share a link to the video that you can watch uh, and then come back to this one. So what do I have in my folder? So currently, all I have is just one folder, and within that folder, I have a diabetes.csv file. So it's a simple data set where I have things like pregnancy, glucose, blood pressure, et cetera, and uh, it's trying to predict, for example, the outcome is whether or not someone has diabetes. Now, there's no other code that's present in this directory. I'm going to go to Klein here, and I'm going to ask a simple question. Can you create a simple machine learning model to predict if a person has diabetes? Now, here it's going to first try to see, well, what are all of the different files that I have in my folder? It sees that there is this file called diabetes.csv. Based on that, it's saying, okay, I'll create a simple machine learning model using Python to create this. It's importing all of these different libraries and in real time, we can see the progress that's making here. So it wrote this entire script, it loaded in the data set, it separated out the X and Y values. It created the machine learning model. It printed the performance, got the feature importances, all of those things. And then it's saying, well, it wants to install all of these libraries. I already have them installed, so I'm just going to simply reject this. And I'm going to try to see if I can run this myself. So Python, and then let's see if it runs the diabetes prediction.py. If I can type Python correctly. And uh, after executing this, you can see that it did run the model. It uh, has some performance for this. It gave me a confusion matrix for this model. And then also gave me some example predictions. So here it created this entire model from scratch without me writing a sim single line of code. I'm going to say, don't run the file. However, I'd like to download the file as a pickle object. So I wanted to modify this file. And now side by side, you'll see all the updates that it's making. Um, I'm just simply going to run this file again. So diabetes prediction.py. Let's just run it. And it says it saved the model as diabetes.pickle. If I see in real time, all of this is kind of happening um, it, within my folder. So feature importances, it created a graph of all the important features that are uh, important for this model. It has all of these different things. Now imagine that I wanted to create a front end interface. I'm going to say write a streamlit application where a user can provide information about themselves and the model predicts if they have diabetes or not. I'm going to also say that assume that I already have streamlit installed and download it. So streamlit is just another library within Python that we can use. Um, here it's writing all of the code. So it's pulling in information first of all about the model and then it's, um, then creating this front end interface uh, that looks really interesting here. So it wrote all of this code and then it's saying, well, now we want to execute this code. So I'm simply going to run streamlit run app.py. If I wanted to, I could also run it from here. It doesn't matter. So once I run this, it says that it's going to open up in my browser. So all I would do is now go to whatever location that it's providing. So in this case, it's providing it on localhost 8502. So it says diabetes prediction system. Um, it gives information about the metrics. It's a place where a user can put in all of this information about themselves, click on predict diabetes risk, and then it predicts whether or not someone has a high or a low risk of diabetes. So it created all of this from scratch without me writing a single line of code. Now, Obviously, you might be asking at this point, well, how much does this cost? So it costs based on API usage. So right now we can see the total cost for this entire project was 22 cents, which, yeah, it, it is expensive, right? 22 cents to actually run this entire model from scratch to write all of the code. However, we don't need to use Anthropic Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, the latest and greatest model. We can simply download the weights of an existing large language model locally and we can simply use it so it's not actually going to cost us a single dollar a single cent even the way that we would do that is under settings i'm going to change the api provider to olama now 
If you haven't watched my video on open web UI, um, definitely watch that first and then come to this one. Um, but in that video, I show you how you can um, install Olama as well as open web UI. Basically, all you would do is just go to olama.com slash library and then hit download. The model that I'm going to be using is Quen 2.5 Coder, uh, or actually Quen 2.5 Coder Tools. And this model is compatible with Klein. So all you would do is click on, and I would recommend the 32 bill version. It is 20 gigs, so it is a pretty large file. Uh, simply copy this, and then within Open Web UI, you can just download it. Um, and once you do that, you will then be able to use the locally hosted Quen 2.5 model. So I'm going to ask it a very simple task. Write me a Python script that takes an input from a user and then prints it. And it says, well, the task is to write a Python script. It says the current working directory has several files. So it is making sure that it's not actually going to be um, using any or an existing file or overriding an existing file. So it understands that it needs to create this file from scratch and it's creating this print input.py script. So the user input is enter something and then you enter something. And then now it's going to ask to see if we can execute this file. Um, but if I wanted to, I could just simply execute this myself. So let's see if we can stop this from running. Okay, there we go. It says task completed. So I'm going to stop this and then um, I'm going to simply run Python. See if that works. Python print underscore input dot py. So it says enter something. I'm going to enter something. And it says you entered something. So it does work. It is going to be a little bit slower. Just the first time that it's running, it, it does take a second to start up. But then after that, it, it does pick up its speed quite a bit. So this is the or these are two ways in which we can make use of Klein, either through the Anthropic Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, which does cost per API usage, or we can just simply uh, use a locally hosted model like the Quen 2.5 Coder model. Um, what my recommendation would be would uh, is essentially start off with using the Quen 2.5 model, use it for like very simple tasks. And then once you get to a point where this model isn't actually doing too well, then you can switch over to the Anthropic 3.5 Cloud model and then use it for more complex tasks. And that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it gave you an idea about tools that data scientists, machine learning engineers, software engineers generally use in their day to day. If you found this interesting, then please leave a like. If uh, you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. If you want me to cover similar content in the future, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.